Men. I'm with Lake Metro Parks. I'm the chief of outdoor education. Uh, what does that mean, right? I don't know. I mean, it, it's I, basically part of my responsibilities is, is overseeing this park, Painesville Township Park, over in Painesville Township, uh, Jordan Creek Park, and also uh, uh, Lakefront Lodge in uh, Willowick. And, oh, you know, I oversee the operations of those parks. We do a bunch of programs, environmental programs, outdoor recreation programs. We also do events like the Halloween drive through at the farm park. That's our um, uh, department's uh, responsibility as well. Now, let me ask you guys, have you guys been here before? Have you been here before? Yeah. Okay. Have you been on the water? Yeah. Yeah? Who has not been on the water before? Either swimming in it, um, been in a boat, um, anything like that. No, is everybody? Okay, so there's a couple of you. So in, in being at Fairport, this is a huge asset, not only to the area, but to just the village itself. I mean, to have this down the street, walkable distance is, is uh, such a nice and, and huge thing to be able to, to just come and take advantage of. Does anybody know? Um, does anybody know, like, kind of the history of this? Why does Lake Metro Parks have this now? Does anybody know anything about that? So back in the '90s, Lake Metro Parks took over responsibility of this park. We don't own it. The village owns it. Village of Fairport. We just manage it, um, and that's taking care of every sort of, you know, from buildings to everyday. Um, everyday uh, operations. You know, it looked a lot different back then. Um, you know, there used to be a long, long time ago, if you didn't know, there used to be a road that came through here. If you dig down far enough, um, you'll hit some asphalt. Um, you know, that's uh, to our maintenance folks that are trying to dig holes for putting in some um, volleyball nets or something like that it's a big pain in the butt for them so um, it's kind of crazy to think that there is a road underneath the sand um, later basically right around the uh, where the boardwalk is so when I, I started about 14 years ago and um, even then the beach looked a lot different so long time ago then 14 years ago the sand that is right there right now actually went another 40 feet out into the water. You started when I was two. <laughs> Man, that makes me feel old. <laughs> 16, sir. All right, well, there you go. So, for, so the amount of sand that we've lost from then to now is substantial. I mean, that's a 40 feet. That, that has really shrunk our, um, our uh, beach tremendously. And does anybody know why that would be like that? Why we lost that much sand? Anybody? Erosion. So erosion, yeah. So one of the main reasons for that is the lake goes, the lake levels go up and down over the years. Right now we're in a, a high spell of the uh, lake being up, uh, being high. Um, back, what well, was four years ago that started happening. Um, it's about a foot higher than normal levels. And a foot doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're looking at a lake like this, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> um, does anybody know why the lake would be so high? Rain. What's that? Rain. Rain. So, I mean, obviously the weather has a lot to do with it. There was a lot, a couple years in a row, maybe a little bit more than that, that the lake didn't freeze over. And that's a big, that's a big deal when the lake doesn't freeze over. It doesn't get a chance to um, kind of do its normal uh, processes of like evaporation and, and we get a lot of rain and, and all those kind of things. So the lake, if you look at every lake around um, the Great Lakes, they're all, they're all really high. And what does that mean when the lake is high? There's higher waves. The waves can go higher onto the land, um, causing a lot of erosion. And about, oh, was that two years ago, a lot of people were really like freaked out, okay? People that live on the land or on the, the shoreline, 
They're losing land like crazy. They can wa basically watch it just being washed away. And what, what, you know, there's really nothing you can do other than maybe throwing some rocks down. So what I want to show you, if we can just get up and walk, we're going to walk over here to kind of show you what we did um, and, and you know, see if it really helped. So come on, let's go. So, um, you know, a couple of years ago, there was a lot of sleepless nights for me here because these rocks weren't here. And so basically nothing was protecting anything that was up here, over here. Basically the only protection was there is, are these walls, this uh, boardwalk that's here, and that's really everything that really saved during that time. We tried throwing some, some uh, sandbags down, um, really didn't do a, a good job with that. We thought it was gonna be a temporary thing that maybe fixed that, but um, really didn't help. So came up to the next year, we're losing parking lots and you know, it's not getting any better. So we decided to throw some rocks down and really that made the difference of everything. Um, you know, two years ago, we couldn't walk where these rocks are from the lake into uh, where the water is now. The water was all the way up against that wall and that was during the whole summer. Now, how the summer or how the lake behaves throughout the year, it goes, the, the levels go up and down. So in July, the, the lake is at its highest. And in February, it's at its lowest. So you come down here and see how, how much space is there between the, this wall and the lake. It'll be another 20 foot difference in, in February. Um, you'll be able to drive a tractor through there right now you that you won't necessarily be able to do that so um so these these rocks really saved the, the uh the where we are right now and then luckily we're just had a our operations came down throw them down and then you know we're we're pretty set until the lake gets higher and then it, it doesn't do it so um do you guys know why this uh, break wall, breakwaters are here. Basically those walls that surround the, um, that surround the, uh, the harbor here. You guys know why that, that was placed? Stop the waves. Stop the waves? For what though? Why, why though? Why to stop the waves? But why would you? Why would you? So people could swim. So uh, technically, actually, the whole reason why these, these, this channel and all this stuff is here is because there's a lot of industry that comes up there. There's rocks and sand and, and salt and all that stuff that come in from other areas across the lake and get dropped off here, and then, and then you know, they get shipped out. So it all revolves around industry. The uh, positives that come out for us is that it protects the harbor, protects it from those waves. Um, if you notice, there's a, you know, the, the break wall here, it starts to kind of peter out after some amount of time. Um, and, and there's only a reason, there's a reason why there's only rocks here and down here. We don't get, when we get a northeast wind, the waves get really big. I mean, really big. And that's what starts moving the sand around and and you know taking the sand away so these rocks then help that to kind of secure what's there there's a there's a there's a term called um littoral drift does anybody have any ever hear that before littoral drift no that's how the sand in the lake drifts throughout the lake shore okay so it usually goes, the, the littoral drift here in Lake Erie goes from west to east. So the sand comes this way, so west is that way, comes this way. So there's a, that break wall that's right out there. Unfortunately, that stops that drift from happening. So the sand that we have here, we don't get any new sand because that stops there. But if you look at fair, um, the headlands, you know how why that beach is so giant? Is because that wall stops all that sand from moving. So it just stands there. So that, that beach has grown and grown and grown because of that break wall right there. 
Um, so that gives us in a situation here at Fairport is that how do we get new sand? Basically, we have to deal with the lake levels. So when the lake goes down again, we'll get some more sand. It won't be new sand, it'll just be the same sand that's here. We get some sand that it shifts from one end of the beach to the other. Um, you notice just the way the, the beach looks is that there's no sand down here, but there's a lot of sand down that end. Okay, so when we get that wind from the northeast, all this sand that's right here just gets pushed all the way down to that far then. Sometimes we get the sand from the other end to push that sand this way, but not as much. It's, it's a lot of the sand gets pushed from here that way. Um, we do bring some sand on to shore, like to, to here, but it's only for the camp. We have a camp that comes down here that's under the shelter over here. And uh, uh, we just, it's, it's some nice beach sand. Like they call it uh, bunker sand. You guys see in a, uh, at a golf course or something. But that's really the only sand we put in there. Um, do you guys know what a dredger is? Have you seen a dredging machine at all and what they're used for? Does anybody know what they're used for? So I talked about how sand moves. <laughs> so I, I, I talk about how sand moves in the lake and, and what the importance of the break wall is. It protects this, this, the shore. But after, over time, you know, what they do is those ships, those big barges that come through, they, they go down in the lake pretty far. So they have to have it pretty deep in the in the channel to be able to get from the lake all the way into in the shore now did anybody see the big um barges that got stuck out there this year okay so that happened because it got shallow out there and they took it a little too far and they got they got stuck on the on the um lake bottom which causes other issues and um very expensive for them to do so then those the dredgers come out and they dig all that stuff up. Um, they are currently doing the mouth right now, but they do, they'll go up to the lake, up up the river. I mean, Where so they so far? that's a good question. So um, the last couple of years, they uh, the the federal laws changed and that says that you can't dump. They they used to take this dredge material way out in the lake and just dump it. The problem with that is in the river, that stuff in the bottom of the river is, could be, have some toxic materials in it or um, some other items that cause like algae blooms or hurts like the fish or that kind of thing. So they, they are in the process of stop doing that. Um, when they dredge the river, there's a recycling facility that's going to be put over there or is currently being built to be put over there over by the Painesville Township Park. There's a company called Kurtz Brothers. You may have heard them. I don't know. They're a local, local uh, company. But they'll be able to go over there. They'll pump all that, all that sand and dredge material into it. And then they'd have these settling ponds and all these kind of things to recycle it. And then they'll sell it back to us, basically. They'll make money off of it. Um, which is in the grand scheme is, is probably the best way to do it versus dumping it in the lake. Um, now, <clears throat> where they're where they're, it, when you're dredging outside of the, the river, technically that's an exemption. That stuff is not toxic compared to what's in the, the river itself. So they'll actually take it and they'll dump it near shore over there according to where um, the government tells them to do it. So, I don't know if you've known that there's a whole plan of trying to connect Painesville Township Park to Fairport, a nice bike path. Hopefully, um, at least a portion of it starting next year. Um, it's a long process. There's a lot of people involved. And when there's a lot of people and organizations involved, it, it goes really, really slow. And then if you do anything on the lake, it's really expensive too. So. There's expense and then all this uh, organizations involved. So, you know, hopefully in the next 10 years, maybe five years, uh, um, that there will be a connection from 
Painesville and that you'll be able to either walk, ride your bike, and you, you'll be like, just like this, as far as you are from the lake now that this boardwalk is, you'll just be a little higher up. You guys have any questions about um, the beach at all in general? Of so another uh, cool item that we have, at least in, in makes our life a little bit easier and, and maybe you guys don't see it on an everyday that you, you don't think about it, but this beach gets groomed daily in the summertime. So what does grooming mean? So basically we have a machine that's a, a surf rake that is taken behind a tractor and it, it just picks up the stuff that's it's on, the, um, on the sand. Picks up rocks, leaves the sand. Leaves, uh, picks up trash, but the important part, it leaves the sand on that. So actually what I wanna do is see if I can get the maintenance guy to get it started and kind of show you how it works. And um, these, this is the same machine that they use across the nation. There's other machines like it, but they'll have it at like Hilton Head or um, you know places like that that they use the same same exact machine. So let me uh, let me see if I can get them Just to get things started. Oh yeah, go ahead. How often do they dredge the river in the England? Oh, so they they dredge. You know, it's really maybe every year, every other year, depending on um, the need. Um, that's a state and government, uh, state and federal government program that they'll go around from um, river to river or whatever to be able to do that. And then, how much do you know how much it costs to dredge the river? Actually, I do not know that. That's a really good question. Um, I just know that anything on the lake is you just kind of double everything, <laughs> a, a normal cost, and you double it. So, well, let me see if I can get the guy to start the tractor up. Sand and... it. <laughs> yeah. So just real quick, let me show you this thing. So, I mean, essentially it's just like a big comb with a, um, with a, uh, like there's a band in there basically. And this thing spins, there's these little tines in here. And these things spin and spin and spin and spin. And, and he lowers it down and you can kind of see these ridges here that pick up the sand as we go. Okay, it doesn't pick up the sand, it picks up the stuff in the sand. So go ahead and start it up and then uh, start, yeah, go ahead and loop around, that'd be great. Now, before this, we used to just drag this thing called a sand dollar around uh, with like a Kubota or something like that. So the nice thing is it can go on the water if we need it to. We don't really need it to. And then it also, at the, main, the same time, you can um, level the, the beach out. And it really saves on picking up you know, manpower of trying to pick up the whole, the whole beach. Yeah, so it picks up the trash. It throws it up onto that, um, that band, that... Uh, that thing that's spinning and then it shoots it into a little ho uh, hopper and then the hopper can be sh put into the trash. Yeah. yeah, but then that's the hopper in the back here and it puts it right in. Honestly, it's, it's a really nice piece of equipment that like it's just makes our life 100 and then you know for people like you guys it's almost an expectation now like oh you know it should be looking like this and and, and you know it, it you come by you want to make sure the beach looks clean and and nice and it really makes a huge difference you throw another 40 feet of beach into there it's a two-hour process versus a 45 minute process so you know there's a give and take of how much sand we have and, and what we what we can do with it Um, places like Headlands, they have one piece of equipment like this for like four of their parks. So they go around seasonally and do their, their beaches. So they'll go on like 
Memorial Day, they'll do the whole beach and they won't come back until um, July 4th and then they won't come again until Labor Day. How much um, do one Day. of those things cost? Um, so that is uh, about $40,000 a piece of equipment right there. Yeah, we're good. And then um, tractor about the same, same amount, if not a little bit more. We've had that from about, oh, I don't know. 2008 we started we got this thing and it's it's been a great a great asset to this park to make it look the way it does on a daily basis yeah so i mean we're really so you know with these new projects that are coming up like specifically the uh the lakeshore trail that's a huge thing for i, I would say for the village of fairport i mean you guys i would love to have something like this um, I would love to have something like this in my backyard. I live in Wycliffe, and the closest thing that's similar to that, what that's going to be, there's a, there's a Lakeshore Trail um, off of Sims Park in Euclid. It's about maybe a half mile long. This will be two, two and a half miles. So that's a, that's a huge thing. Um, that, um, And I know that there's always plans of, for the village to be able to uh, create something more with the area that where the port authority is and beyond so you know there's some really cool things that could happen in this in this village here does anybody have any questions on how the beach runs and and you guys uh, you guys who is that what funds the metro parks where do you get your money so we have uh two levies uh that are voted on every 10 years that are based off of property um property taxes so our recent one was, I think, last year, and um, that's about 60 to 70 percent of our uh, operating expenses. Others are grants and revenue and that kind of thing. And that's everybody in the county. Everybody that's in the county. Up. Yep, yep. That's a county-wide thing, for sure. And then the Cleveland Metro Parks. That's done uh, same thing out of Cuyahoga County, though. Yeah, so Cuyahoga County is, is um, that's a, a Cleveland Metro Parks. They have some parks in, in Lake County, North Chagrin Rivers Reservation, but all their property, all their levies are through Cuyahoga County. Yeah. The bees are uh, pretty intense this time of year, so I apologize, and that's the right reaction. Just, just ignore them as much as you can. Um, it's amazing uh, the, uh, the bug, what, what, from what month it is to what bug you're getting bothered by. Um, in May, it's, uh, what is the mayflies? June is there's biting flies. Mosquitoes. <laughs> Mosquitoes, you know, all those things, so. Mosquitoes are always getting I don't know, but I, I, does anybody know how far it is to Canada? What's the shortest miles. distance? Anybody know how many miles? If it was just straight from here to Canada. Fourteen. Oh no, we're talking like more fifty, fifties, fifty-nine, sixty-two, depending on how straight, straight you go. Straight yeah, straight across. across, straight across, straight across. Oh, let me ask you some other fun facts about Lake Erie and, and the Great Lakes. Does anybody know what the deepest Great Lake is? Anybody know? Does anybody? Can you name the Great Lakes? Lake Michigan. Wait. Yep. There's it's. Here on Ontario, Ontario? Michigan, Michigan. Erie, Erie. Erie. Superior. Superior. Is out of those five, does anybody know how deep, what the deepest one is? The Superior. What's that? The Superior. Superior. That's right. Superior is the deepest. Do you know which one's the shallowest? This one. Here. Lake Erie. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why it gets so warm. The lake water gets so warm is because. You know, right now it's like you can. It's like 77 to 80 degrees. Is it Lake Michigan like the coldest? I think Lake Superior might be the coldest because it's the deepest, um, and it really depends on where you are on Lake Michigan too. I went out to the south, like by Chicago, and the water was the same temperature, but the further you go north, it gets colder too. So. So what is the uh, distance to the border between the between Canada and? Go out straight across. Mm -hmm. You know, I think cross, that's. Is that when you cross in the Canadian 
water? Yeah, I think there's a there's an imaginary line at some point. I don't know where it is. I think it's about the halfway point. Um, if you ever look at like Google Earth or something like that, you can kind of see that dot, dotted line. Yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while, we do get um, border <laughs> patrol that walks through here, and we ask them, "Like, why are you guys here?" And it's like, "Well, you want our border, basically." So um, it's interesting to think about on that. We have Canadian refugees in <laughs> You never know. You never know. What, like can you tell Park. me about the water quality? Like when we walked in, it said. On the sign over there, there's like a little, today's water quality is, and then it, and I see a lot of posts about that. What yeah, that? so the, between Memorial Day and Labor Day, the health department comes out and they come out daily and test the water. Well, they take a sample of it. Now, back, uh, you know, four or five years ago, you, it would be, this, the test, the results that you would get today would be from actually yesterday because it takes that long to kind of test the water to see what's in it. So they, they're testing for E. coli, um, uh, you know, that nasty uh, bacteria that you don't want to have in, in your body. Yeah, <clears throat> but they come out and they now do a prediction based on how much rain we got, the wind, how clear the water is, how, where the wind is, the waves, all that kind of thing. And then they make their prediction plus test the water to, to back up their prediction to say what the water quality is. Oh, yeah. And during, during summer, I always see warnings for riptides. Yeah, so that's, so I'll get to that one in a second too. So the, then they give us a, a good or poor quality and then we have to post it based off oh, of their so prediction. You know, and thankfully we've been really lucky. A lot of our, predict, a lot of our uh, water quality has been super, super good. And a lot has to do with um, the weather and all that kind of thing. Now you asked about the riptides and, and the, I mean, it's more of the, the currents that we have. Um, I think it was yesterday there was the uh, weather channel or the, they put out beach hazard statements. Don't go in the water because there's some currents, strong currents, and a lot has to do with the, uh, the wind, okay? <clears throat> the wind causes a lot of currents to happen and there are, in, uh, specifically in other parts of the Great Lakes, they, they deal with that a lot. There's a riptide that pulls, that pulls people out and you don't know it and all that kind of thing. You know, and here, uh, because we're protected by these, these, the harbor and all that stuff, we don't necessarily have that as much as um, other places that aren't protected, such as headlands or, or those kind of places that will pull you out into the water. We don't get those big waves and we don't get those big currents because of that. Um, but still, they have to kind of just put out the statement and make sure that understand, hey, there's, there's a warning, there's a threat out there for sure. That's a good question, though. Is that the dredging boat coming down the river right now? Yep, yep. So um, it gets pushed and pulled by a towboat. You see it out there? It's got a big crane on it. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Once they do it, it, it the water, the, um, it can be kind of smelly sometimes, especially when it's in the, la the river like that. How long will it take them to do like they've been here a couple weeks already. Yeah, at least a, a couple months it'll, it, it'll be here, depending on how much they need to move. How deep is the water from here to the break wall? So um, depending on where you are, it could be like, you know, 12 to 15 feet in the harbor, the, the, the lake level or the harbor level. But when you're out in that channel from um, the river to the, I mean, that's 20 feet right there. That's, but that's that channel that they dig out. Now, if you're out at, um, if you're out by the uh, break wall, you can actually stand out there. You can, it, it's not deep out there. Um, it's pretty cool. We used to have a swimming, a weekly swimming group that would leave this part and go over there and back, which is about a mile, depending on how how much you turn back and forth um, when you're swimming. I did that one time. That's it's a quite an achievement, but <laughs> swimming out to the break wall and back. I would. <clears throat> yeah. I love swimming. You can jump off the pier like that. Uh, you know, I, I don't see. There's no reason for the Army Corps of Engineers are the folks that manage, make sure that this break wall is 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 in good condition. 
this portion out there really doesn't affect them, so they, I don't think they're going to be doing that anytime soon. They don't really see the need for it. It would be some other organization that would come in and probably do that, but I don't think there's... But if you go boating, you should only go out through the green and red. Yeah, so you see the uh, those lights on each one of those rock islands, essentially? Yeah. That basically marks any to any place between that, there's a break wall underneath the water. You can't necessarily see. We've had, I've seen two or three boats this season already kind of run up to shore and, and hit those. Um, it happens every year and just people don't know what those lights mean. Um, if you go farther down that way, you can go around. The easiest way is the most obvious between the channel here. <clears throat> you know, as a, I'm, a, I'm a kayaker, uh, paddleboarder by uh, my hobby and that kind of where I came up in here. <clears throat> If you ever go up into the into the channel, just be careful. You're the smallest boat. You're not as seen as the big boats that are coming through. Stay out of their way if you're in a smaller boat because they can't stop as quick as you can. So yeah. But what happens when a boat sinks? So a boat sinks, what do you think happens, guys? They just leave it there. It's very expensive. <laughs> so there's like a, a tow company that comes out and can, they can remove it. But there's also uh, environmental hazard because there's oil and gas in your car, uh, not in your car, in your boat, and that can leak into the water and you may have to pay for that. So but it's a very expensive them? thing. What? Did they ever just leave them? No. Not, not the ones that I've seen. Mm. <clears throat> they, they, get the, they have the technology to pull people out if they need to, so if they need the help. One thing you want people to know when they come to the beach, like what, what's something that you want everybody to know? You know, my, my biggest thing is for when, when somebody comes to the beach and they want to enjoy the beach by meaning going in the water, you know, this is the biggest asset for the village and, and for this portion of the, the, the county and this portion of the, you know. But this can also be a very dangerous thing too. If you don't know how to swim, eh, you know, stay out of the water or wear a life jacket. Um, there are many places um, like Edgewater or Huntington Beach, all those areas that they get people that um, can't swim or that, that drown because of that. Or even in Headlands, there was, there was last year there was a couple kids that, that um, jumped in the water, didn't come up. You know, we have a swim area for a reason. Stay in the water. If you're going to stay in the water, stay in the, stay in the shallow area. If, you don't have, if you're not um, comfortable with swimming or if the conditions aren't right, either have a life jacket on or don't enter the water at all. That's my biggest concern. I don't want every, any, any time that to happen at all. That's my biggest fear, honestly. So do you guys, do you guys like, so does like where you guys take care of stop there and then like the Port Authority has like the pier and stuff? Yeah, so we, we uh, manage up to that. There's like a the little fence. split rail fence right down there. That, that, that's where the kind of beach ends. We, we don't manage anything past that. We may mow some stuff, but that's about it. We don't do anything past that. Do you do all the hiring here? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I do help without the hiring. And, you know, the nice thing is, guys, if you are ever looking for a job, you can get a job just like that if you apply here at Lake Metro Parks for this beach specifically. To be able to walk or ride your bike or even drive, whatever, down to here, work as a lifeguard. We're always looking for lifeguards, obviously, but working in the, you know, in the, in the gate or in the concession stand or the maintenance, these are all really cool summer jobs that you work with people that your same age. Um, if I had a, if I lived here when I was younger and this was an opportunity, I would be hounding here all the time because it's a, a small little family community within this that we all kind of you know, work together and, and have fun. And you get to be outside and get on a jet ski or be on a kayak or a paddleboard or any of those things. So yes, please, when it comes time next year, March, April, May, we would love to have you. And I see some good swimmers, maybe this gentleman right here. You know, you like to swim. 
We'll train you to be lifeguard, man. Sounds like a job Yeah, yeah. Love to have you, so. All right. You guys, I mean, honestly, to be able to come down to a beach during school, I admire, I just, I'm jealous. This is a really sweet thing to be able to come and do. So I appreciate you guys coming down. And, and enjoy your time here at the beach. And, and when you're not in class or whatever, take care of it. If you see somebody writing on something, shake your finger at them. <laughs>